Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Doodling Through Education. If you haven't already, head on over to doodlingthrougheducation.com and grab your workbooks um, for history and science. Uh, the pages in these works workbooks have been designed to go along with these videos. And I believe it will be really helpful for your student to um, solidify the things that they learn. Today, we have a science video for my CC students. This is cycle one, week two. And we are going to be talking about the kingdoms of living things. So last week, we talked about the classifications of living things. And this week, we are going to talk about the kingdoms. Um, so without further ado, let's start doodling. As I said, last week, we talked about the classification of living things. This week, we are going to narrow that down and look specifically at the kingdoms of living things and how they show how God's creation is organized. First, we're going to talk about Archaea. And Archaea, we talked a little bit about last week. We know that this is a domain, um, but under the Archaea domain is only one kingdom, and this is the Archaea kingdom. And the Archaea kingdom includes all single-celled prokaryotes, which means that these are organisms that lack a nucleus. These are the organisms that can live in some very extreme places, like hot springs and hydrothermal vents on volcanoes. They are called extremophiles, and this just means that they live in extreme and harsh environments where other organisms like animals could not survive. As I said, some of these places include hot springs or volcanic vents or even inside some animals. They can even be found in boiling water, very salty water, and places that are very acidic or have no oxygen. So truly, even though organisms in the Archaea Kingdom are only single cell, they are pretty tough. Next, let's talk about bacteria. And if you remember from last week again, bacteria is a domain and the one kingdom found under that domain is the bacteria kingdom. Bacteria can live in almost every type of environment. And when you think of bacteria, oftentimes you think of getting sick. But not all bacteria make you sick. Some bacteria are even found in your gut and helps our body to function in a healthy manner. So obviously there are many different types of bacteria. There are bacteria that make you sick. And oftentimes, if you become sick due to bacteria and you go to the doctor, they will prescribe antibiotic medication to help kill the bacteria infection. Bacteria have many different shapes, including round, spiral, and rod shapes. Bacteria are found everywhere on Earth. They can be found in the dirt, in the air, in the water, on plants, in animals. And specifically, the bacteria that live in the soil help to compose, decompose dead plants or animals. And interestingly, some bacteria are needed in food to help make things like yogurt, cheese, and even pickles. And so, as you can see, bacteria are very important in the Earth's ecosystem. Next, let's talk about the Protista Kingdom. The Protista Kingdom um, includes a very diverse and different group of organisms. And these protists, as we call them, don't easily fit into any other kingdom. It's interesting because some protists are more animal-like and some are more plant-like, where even others are more fungus-like. Most protists are unicellular, like bacteria and archaea, but that isn't a set rule. Some have cell walls and some do not. 
some protists are parasitic, which means they can cause disease in animals and humans, but others are harmless to humans. Some of the better known types of protists are amoebas and algae. And they are so small that you cannot see them without a microscope. Now let's talk about the fungi kingdom. Uh, organisms in the fungi kingdom include both unicellular and multicellular organisms. And this just means that some fungi are made of one cell and some fungi are made of multiple cells. Fungi are not capable of photosynthesis, which we'll talk about when we get to plants, but that is what makes fungi different from plants. And oftentimes they are very important for recycling nutrients back into the environment. They can decompose organic matter and acquire nutrients through just absorbing them. Some species of fungus are toxic to animals and humans, but others have beneficial uses. One type of organism in fungi is responsible for the production of penicillin, which is an antibiotic that helps to fight off bacterial infections that we were talking about just a few minutes ago. Some examples of organisms in this kingdom are mushrooms, yeasts, molds, and mildew. Specifically, yeast helps to make bread dough rise and makes delicious loaves of bread. Whereas mushrooms can also be tasty to eat, but it has to be a certain edible type of mushroom. Fungi range in size from incredibly small and only visible under a microscope to the largest fungus on earth, which is actually more than three miles wide. Let's move on to plantae. This kingdom includes all of the plants on earth. They are extremely important to life on earth because they provide oxygen, as well as many other things like shelter, clothing, food, and medicine. There are two types of plants in these kingdoms. There's the vascular and non-vascular plants. Vascular plants have roots, stems, and leaves, and can move water throughout it, while non-vascular plants absorb the water through their surface. There are also flowering and non-flowering plants, as well as seed-bearing and non-seed-bearing plants. And we'll talk about plants more later on in our school year. Plants are considered to be autotrophs, and this means that they make their own food. They use the sunlight, air, and water to make sugar and oxygen in a process called photosynthesis. They are unlike animals because they do not have a skeleton and instead use their cell walls to support them. All of the animals on earth either eat plants or eat other animals that eat plants. And so plants are essential for life on earth. Now let's move on to Animalia. This kingdom includes animal organisms, which are all multicellular eukaryotes, which means that they have multiple cells and their cells have nuclei in them. Some examples of animals would be anything from tigers all the way to kangaroos. The animal kingdom has over one million known species. Now, animals are heterotrophs, and this means that they cannot make their own food the way plants do, but they must find and eat food for energy. The animal kingdom is also divided further down into vertebrates and invertebrates. Vertebrates are animals with a backbone, and invertebrates do not have a backbone. Vertebrates can include things such as fish, birds, reptiles, amphibians, and mammals. Invertebrates include things like insects, clams, and crabs. 97% of all of the animal species are actually invertebrates, and so they outnumber 
vertebrates by a lot. And that's all we have today. I hope you learned a lot about the kingdoms in our classification system. And on that note, remember to be kind, follow God's will, and take care. Bye.